Hi, Tim here, and today I want to talk about Mafia 3. I just recently finished the game and uh, I want to give you my thoughts and uh, impressions on it. So, uh, first of all, Mafia 3, the third installment in the series, and, uh, you know, the first was um, sort of the GTA-like um, game, which tried to make you feel like a boss of Mafia. Uh, second was uh, a bit more linear and, you know, this was, I think, the most criticized part of it. And uh, we'll finally, after quite some years, have the third installment, which is uh, honestly a disappointment to the series. Uh, it's not all bad, so let's talk about the pros of it at first. Um, I have to mention that it took me about 22 hours to finish the whole game and most of the time I was doing the side missions that are basically gating the content, gating the storyline from you, which is quite a bit annoying. But uh, again, as I said, let's start with uh, pros of this game. First of all, I want to note the atmosphere. The huge detailed CD along with an amazing soundtrack makes you really feel like you are in the 70s in, you know, some US um, city, which works pretty well. You know, the um, black people are oppressed and, you know, a lot of people are coming back from Vietnam and all of that kind of stuff happening. And that actually it feels like it in this game due to the, as again, as I said, soundtrack and the pretty huge detailed CD. Um, the next good part about game is the solid storyline. Um, it's, I, I wouldn't call it amazing by any account, but it's pretty solid, you know, it has an interesting storyline and there's like great characters. They're very good voice acting, like all the characters, all the cutscenes looks really, really cool. And, uh, you know, it makes me even more sad that they like kind of gate this content from you. Uh, and the last pro thing about this game is basically game mechanics. Again, they are nothing amazing, nothing to tell about, you know, there's no innovations here, but they are really solid, like shooting, driving, cover system, all of that stuff works really well, and uh, your typical gameplay works fine, so it doesn't, you know, there's no um, game-breaking things or no uh, shortcomings here, basically. Uh, melee system could have been a bit more interesting, but hey, you know, it's basically press B button to punch someone in the face, so it works. Okay, now those are about all pros that I can remember after 22 hours of playing. Let's talk about cons. One of the major things I don't like about this game is the fact that it actually doesn't make you feel like you are part of Mafia. Even though you do go around and capture those uh, like neighborhoods and you know you put your underbosses to control them, you don't really feel like you are influencing everything. You don't feel like you know people actually respect you because you are Mafia. You don't feel like you own businesses. You don't feel like you know the city knows you. There's no this feeling. It was there in Mafia One, and Mafia Two actually. So and somehow they lost it along the way. Um, it might be that one of the biggest reasons why this doesn't feel like it is the level of the AI that they have in this game. Um, AI is kind of abysmal. Um, basically, there are two approaches to just about any situation in this game. You can either go uh, guns blazing and just murder everyone in your way, or you can go stealthily and, you know, go like from cover to cover and uh, kill some guys. And to do that, you have a whistle mechanic to help you, where you can basically press a button to whistle, and then the enemy will come to you, and then you can kill him. Uh, the thing is that, I don't know who decided that it should work this way, but whistle only attracts one enemy. So there's just like four guys standing there talking and you press whistle button, only one of them will come towards you. So what that means is that you can just sit in a cover, whistle and murder whoever comes to you, which is kind of ridiculous. More than that, the AI is just brain dead. So basically, if you start shooting and uh, if you just find some sort of a cover that is, um, this, let's say, strangely positioned, AI might end up just standing there and shooting in the wall which separates you from him. And it, that happens so many times. It's just so, so bad. Like, I don't know, pathfinding is terrible. Like this whistling thing, uh, sometimes you just, you know, like the enemy is in line of sight and uh, there's like a wall on the left, for example, you're sitting just a bit right of it. You whistle and think, okay, he's going to go right, right around, like, you know, the shortest path to me and then I'm just going to pick him here and kill him. 
Uh, instead, AI just turns around and goes all the long way around the left wall around you, which is like three, four times longer. And um, uh, you are like, what is even going on? I mean, I know that pathfinding is not a simple thing to implement, but seriously, like this is just so bad. So the AI is like one of the major problems that, uh, again, uh, what I have to note is that if you go guns blazing, the AI actually works pretty well. So the only problems that it has is with the sneaking and uh, I will get to it in the last part where I uh, talk about the why it feels uh, this way. So the next thing that is again breaks the whole like most of the game for me anyway is the repetitive samey side quests that are forced onto you as main quests or rather as gates to main quests. So uh, this game has nine districts and uh, to take down the last boss you have to take down all those nine districts. Uh, and each district has a boss over it. So uh, to take over that boss, you first have to take two of its underbosses, which makes it 18 underbosses. Uh, and to take those 18 underbosses out, you have to do additional side quests to do enough damage to get those underbosses out, which means three to four to five uh, side missions to get each underboss out. So if you multiply that, that's gonna be a lot of bolloxy side missions. Uh, if they were optional, say if they allowed to just go and kill the boss right away and say if you do those side missions, his um, reinforcements would be weakened or something along those lines, it would be fine. But the way it's organized right now, it's actually they force you to do each and every one of those side quests. It is terrible. Like at first, it's actually pretty fun. But then once you get like to second or third district, it's kind of all the same missions. You know, go and kill this guy, go interrogate this guy, go and break supplies here, go and steal cars here. And it's just so effing boring. It's I, like, I don't know who decided this was a good decision, but it's not. It's just like, I feel like if they would only allow you to do main quests, this game would be so much better. Yeah, sure, it will be finished in like six to, I don't know, eight hours, maybe seven hours. I, I mean, I guess six is about right if you just do the main quests, but it will be so much more fun because the main missions are actually really, really great. All of them are well staged. The level design is awesome. The voice acting, the storyline, the cutscenes I already mentioned are really, really cool. And you know, the, all those little details make the really great storyline missions, but those side quests are just boring as hell. And then we come to our next con, which is a pretty terrible optimization of the game. As you might know, at first it was locked at 30 FPS and well, there's a good reason for it. Uh, my PC, which is, well, not exactly high end, but you know, it's decent one. For example, I can run Titanfall on maximum and it still gives me like solid 60 FPS. This game, I think I never saw 60 FPS at all. I mean, there's a counter in the top right corner uh, from Steam and as you can see, most of the time it's like 40 to 50 FPS, which is okay-ish, but um, you know, the faster you are driving, the more of a slog it becomes and well the optimization is just not very good and I mean it's not an amazingly looking game it looks okay but again comparing to the same Titanfall which actually looks amazingly good this is just like you know game from a few years ago maybe so it's not very well optimized and it doesn't seems like they want to patch those bugs out now in addition to poor optimization there are like a bunch of bugs as I already mentioned the AI is like one of the major problems disappearing cars uh, pop in cars that appear out of nowhere, all that is in the game. And even though there was a, like already a bunch of pretty major patches, nothing is really fixed. I've, I haven't seen any improvements there. So it's like, it's really sad to see that. All right, so the next con is actually very little variety of cars and guns. So the car park in comparison to something like say GTA 4 or, or 5 or even Mafia 2 is very small, it's like, and it's split across those um, areas, so it's very rare to see the cars from one um, neighborhood and in another one. So it's like, uh, you always feel like you're driving the same car. And at some point you just don't care anymore. You just take whatever, you know, the closest to you or even use the one of the in-game mechanics that I will talk about um, in a minute. Okay, so the next thing is, um, which is disappointing again, is that lots of um, mechanics are actually hidden behind unlocks 
that are very boring to achieve because they require you to do all those samey side missions. And of course you don't want to do that. You just want to rush through the game and you know you want to see the storyline, you want to see the cutscenes. But they actually force you to do more of those side missions just to get the cool things. Like, you know, to get a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher, you have to do bollocksy side missions for your underbosses so that you earn a favor from them so that they actually give you this uh, special weapon, unlock it for you so that you can buy it. Uh, or no, I think they actually give it for free, but still you have to unlock it first. So, and uh, you know, it doesn't matter that you gave them half of the city, they still want you to do more shit for them to get a good weapon, which is kind of ridiculous. You, you're supposed to be a big bad mafia boss. Why the hell do you have to do things for your underbosses to unlock weapons? That Again, that breaks this, you know, feel of that you are actually mafia boss. Right, so, uh, and this leads us to another problem with unlocks, that most of them are actually meaningless, like completely meaningless. You unlock things like, uh, some of them are quite useful. For example, you can unlock conciliary that will pick off your cash, which you lose if you die, uh, and, you know, uh, deliver it to a bank, which is basically safeguarded from uh, lose on death. Uh, but on the other hand, you can unlock things like um, steal cars quietly, which is on one hand sounds, you know, cool. So like there's this underboss Brook uh, or Burke, I think, uh, who is actually an Irish sort of car uh, dealer, like stealing cars and, you know, d dismembering them on parts and selling them parts by parts. And he kind of, if you um, give him enough regions, he will teach you how to steal cars quietly. The problem is, you don't even need that because once you acquire him in your crew, he will give you an ability to call in car delivery at any time. And you can, like there are nine cars to deliver and most of them are actually way better than what you can, what you can steal on the street. So there's no point in stealing cars. Like you just call in a car, you sit in it and you ride away and you don't even care. And it's like, why do I even need that unlock? Um, which leads us to another problem. As I said, the city was super big. So it's like, it's really big. I think it's actually bigger than GTA V uh, Island, which some people compared. So it's, it's, it's huge, you know, it takes quite some time to drive from one end to another. And uh, there are some missions that will require you to do this driving. And uh, for whatever reason, there is no fast travel system in the game. Any fast travel, you cannot teleport, you cannot call in a taxi. You cannot do anything. You can only call in a car then sit in it and drive for five minutes from one end to another, which is boring. Again, you know, GTA 5 had those moments where you had to drive from one end to another during the mission. The thing is, GTA 5 had really awesome dialogues during that time. Mafia 3 doesn't have anything. You can listen to music, but that's about it. And it's boring as hell. Combined with the poor performance and like under 30 FPS when it loads additional areas, it's an abysmal experience. It's not something you want to do. Um, and, you know, all of kind of all those cons lead me to my last um, con of this game, last basically uh, thing that I like, I cannot say for sure that it's the case, but it actually feels like they started with a really cool story. They started with a really great and detailed CD. They started with a lot of like this really cool ideas and things that you have in game. And then they just ran out of time or money or maybe management push them to release it early you know it just feels rushed basically if it would be given um a year more or maybe even a half year more and they would just make it a bit more rich and interesting it would be uh way better than it is now it just feels really really rushed um on the other hand uh, if those cons are not something that stops you and uh, you do want to just go through the main storyline, it's actually really awesome. I would not buy it for the full price, but uh, when it is discounted to say minus, I don't know, 60%, 75%, uh, that will be actually a very good uh, linear game. Again, if you are willing to go through all those boring side quests. Uh, which, thankfully, to the stupid AI can be done very quickly because you can just sit and whistle and murder everyone who you need to murder. It doesn't take very long, but, um, you know, you kind of enjoy this at first, but then at some point you're just like, okay, screw it, I'm just going to do it as quick as I can. And uh, then you start doing uh, kill missions with just going in, throwing a grenade at the main guy who you need to kill and then just running away because that's the fastest way to do that, which is ridiculous. Just to get to those juicy, awesome storyline missions and see the cutscenes where, you know, you actually deal with the underbosses of the main bad guy and uh, 
it's like I wish they would just make it linear. It would be so much better. Okay, that is it, I think. Thank you for uh, watching my impressions of Mafia 3. I hope you found it useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you played the game and what you think about it. And if you're willing to play it, if you're now uh, considering to play it, maybe when it's discounted. Um, thank you for staying with me and as always, see you next time. Bye.